Hello, my friends, Brett Patterson with Iron Gate Global Advisors coming at you from the financial capital of the West Salt Lake City, Utah, joined by the man you see on the screen, unless you're listening to the podcast only, and then you don't see him, but you'll hear him, Spencer. Ryder, what's up, buddy? Good to be well, here. How's everything in Salt Lake? Well, things are great in Salt Lake. Can't complain. A little, uh, a little dreary, but I'm excited for this podcast slash webcast, Spencer, because we're going to talk about something we've wanted to talk about, but Thanksgiving got in the way of a great discussion on cryptocurrencies, where they are now, where where they were, where they are now, specifically focusing on fraud. That's that's pretty good. That's that's strong language, Fredder. Fraud, 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 strong language. Fraud and FTX, uh, and Sam Bankman Freed, and he's been in the news, and so we want to dissect why and and really dig into to what has happened, but then also remind everybody listening why it's important to have a investing process. And so I'll share my screen, share some charts. Spencer is kind of our, you know, as much as we can say, because I don't think any of us are, but he's kind of our in-house crypto guy. Is that fair? A, a, a very aware of and try to become more educated as possible on crypto. But yeah, I, I, I probably, as, as you said, as we were getting ready for this, probably know maybe the most about FTX or what's going on. Uh, you guys have better things to do, <laughs> more yeah. important things to do. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. All right. Let me share my screen and uh, let's, let's talk about a few things here. And as I share my screen, you, every, everyone viewing this, and we'll post these also in our blog uh, as well, so you can have access to them. But I just want to remind everybody of the four criteria that we have for investing. And I'll preface it by saying this, we have not purchased any crypto. I've never earned any crypto or any coin of any kind myself. Uh, I have never purchased, we at Iron Gate have never purchased any crypto coin of any kind for clients. Can, and, can I disclose one thing, Brett? This is yeah, going to sure. sound like a joke, but I need to make sure I disclose it. My brother once owed me $250 and he was, this is years ago on the crypto and he was kind of in that wave, you know, type of thing. And sure. so I told him, I told him to pay me back that $250 in whatever coin he thought was good or something. So I, I, I do in some wallet somewhere, uh, have some cryptocurrency. Somewhere. You have about 10 cents of crypto now. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see if I looked it we'll up, it, who knows where it is, yeah. but that, that's, that's the crypto that I own. So, so the reason why we have never purchased crypto, it's the same reason why we, we don't buy a lot of investments. And it's that first bullet point you see on your screen right there is we must understand the business in the industry. Uh, and, and to be candid, we don't fully understand blockchain and the advantages of crypto and don't understand looking at other of these bullets, the long-term competitive advantage of Cardano versus, you know, whatever other coin, Bitcoin, Ethereum. And the fourth bullet there is we like to buy investments when they're available at a good price below what the company's worth. There's no company in crypto. There's no, there's no way to value a coin. There's no, the coin like gold, we've never purchased gold either. Uh, the coin like gold doesn't produce earnings. There's no dividends, right? There's nothing. So we don't invest because it doesn't meet our four criteria. However, a lot of people may have invested or may be aware of what's happening in the crypto world. And so that's why it's important for us to, to discuss it and, and to learn from it, most importantly. So uh, year-to-date returns or, or uh, returns, let me bring this up. All right, so here's, a, here's an interesting chart here, Spencer. That is that is a work of art right there. That's kind uh, of a hot mess it's kind right of there. it's kind of a hot mess for sure. And let me explain. All these coins, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Cardano, 
which I didn't hear of until today when you told me about it. Binance, again, same thing. XRP, we first learned of it today. Anyway, this is the percent return off of its highs or the percent down from its highs, the percent off the highs. Down um, Cardano down 89%, Dogecoin down 84%, uh, XRP down 77%. Uh, where's Bitcoin down 74%, Ethereum down 73%. So all of these coins have been, have been hammered this year. Hey, really quickly, just because I think context matters, S&P 500, I think I, I didn't look at it today. What down 15, 16% on the year. Yeah. I can look at it right here. Yeah. Uh, year to date S&P down. 14.3%. Oh. 14.3. And then, and NASDAQ? 26. 26. Okay. Yeah. Context matters, obviously. So uh, 70, 70 percentages, you know, ish uh, to 14 to 26 for, for equities. So that's what's happened to Bitcoin. I mean, it's just, it's just been, been hammered uh, certainly, but but let's talk about let's let's talk about some nuts and bolts before we discuss FTX in particular. You have all these different coins, Spencer. If if I want to buy a cryptocurrency, first off, tell me this for somebody that don't doesn't know a lot about crypto. Tell me what a cryptocurrency is, and then tell me where I can buy one. Great, great question. So, a cryptocurrency is what we would call a digital currency from a decentralized source. And what that means is the US dollar comes from a, a, a central bank from the US government. Backed a by the US government. Backed by the US government. A cryptocurrency is digital. So this may this isn't accurate, but I used to tell my brother, it's like Super Mario coins. It, 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 it's, it's data ultimately is what it is. It's data that is verified and maintained by a decentralized system using cryptography instead of just one centralized authority is, is really what it is. Yeah. Where, if I want to go buy a cryptocurrency, I have to go to what are called cryptocurrency exchanges. And there's a number of them. And they've, they've over the last few years, they've grown and grown and grown to where there's a lot of different ones. Coinbase is a very popular one. It's a public That's a publicly traded, traded, traded company. Um, Robinhood, you can trade cryptocurrency on Robinhood. Um, some of the less well-known ones, I guess, unless you're in that world, Binance, um, uh, Luna, um, FTX, uh, Genesis. Uh, if you remember the Winklevoss twins, they've got a cryptocurrency exchange, you know, so there's a whole bunch of them, but FTX was a big one. Coinbase is a very big one. Robinhood does it, you know, but... So you have to go onto an exchange and and deposit some type of value, usually dollars, but it can be something else. It can be other crypto that you have. But if you don't have crypto, you take your dollars, you deposit it into an account, say at Coinbase or something, and then you can go buy certain cryptocurrencies. And not all cryptocurrencies are traded on all exchanges. So you have to be able to go to the right exchange if you want to buy a specific currency. So one of the biggest of those exchanges was FTX, Correct. which has been in the news a lot lately. And want, want to focus on, on that for just a moment. Let me bring up another, uh, another image here. Here is the individual that started, or one of the individuals, Sam Bankman-Fried, that started FTX. Uh, I have on my screen what's called an FTX token, okay? Because each exchange has what's known as a stable coin, I believe. You correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, not all not all exchanges have them, but a lot of exchanges. And let me just say, Brett, yeah. you've got these guys who have started these exchanges. And all of these currencies are just created out of thin air. And I don't mean that good or bad, right or wrong, but they... They're, they're just created digitally. Someone puts in the, the, the work, the, the, uh, the actual kind of writing of code and those types of things, 
to create the currency. And so a lot of these currents, these exchanges have said, well, why don't we just create our own currency, you know, as, as a medium of exchange, we can create it out of thin air. People will pay us, you know, exchange dollars or whatever for it. So it's another opportunity for a revenue stream to create your own token. <laughs> I'm just thinking about that for a minute. It's, it, 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 um, it's so different from our mindset as investors, but this as, is as, as business, business owners, right? It's yeah, as business completely owners. different. Um, okay. So tell me specifically about FTX as it's been in the news and about this token that I'm seeing here. And tell me, like, uh, unwind all of this crap, and I'm going to pepper you with with questions along the way. Okay, so so this is not the first time this has happened. It's just the scale at which, it, like, the size of FTX is why it's such a big deal. This last summer, I believe it was, was something similar happened in what was called a Luna coin and uh, and, a, and a stable coin. So it, that's my tokens, dog's name, Luna. Say, you say what? I see. <laughs> That's your dog's name, Luna. That's my dog's name. Um, okay, so you've got FTX, which is a cryptocurrency exchange. And uh, everyone and their dog, and I think you've got a list ready to talk about all the stars and everyone that they got on board to promote it, to invest in it, to be a part of it. And yeah. um, I mean, people are riding the wave. And ultimately, this is just an exchange where people can go in, open an account, and then buy cryptocurrency. Put a hundred dollars in your in your FTX account, and you can start trading different cryptocurrencies. Go buy some other cryptocurrency. See, ride that for a while, trade it for another one. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of the things about it, and, and like I said, this isn't the first time it's happened. They had their own coin, which was supposed to be stable. So guess what? You could even get out of your dollars and uh, and and be in these coins. Why would you do that? Because they were um, they were paying high interest rates. Different exchanges were paying. It started at like three percent or four percent. I saw six percent. I saw eight percent. Yeah. I saw people telling me twenty percent. Clients were telling me, "Dude, why not? Why would I keep money in a bank account? I can put all of it in this stable coin." and get paid 20%. Which and, is, so a stable coin is, is much like a money market type fund. Yeah, it, it, they, it, they tried to market it as like pretty much a replacement for the US dollar. Look, okay. this is going to be one to one. It's not going to move much. It's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to make a lot of money. But guess what? Because what we'll do is we can loan out the currency, the crypto you have, and we're going to pay you interest on it. So when they would tell me this, to be honest with you, it seemed very Ponzi schemish to me. I'm like, how are you? How are? How does that not end poorly? But I didn't understand it well enough to be able to just completely say, "Hey, that's wrong." And so all these people on the FTX exchange, they were also in FTT, which is the, the which was the FTX stablecoin or or its token, and one which is what we're looking at on the screen here. Yeah, FTX okay. token. Yep, that's exactly right. And and one of the things about it that they did to try to get their customers to not sit in in dollars but to stay in tokens is there would be benefits if you if you were in tokens think of it as like airline miles and getting status if you would get discounts on buying currencies or or certain things like that there were perks to being in the token because they wanted to funnel people into it i think i think airline miles is a is a really good way to kind of view it well mm -hmm. all of a sudden um and and this is this is all it takes all of a sudden binance who is another cryptocurrency exchange, um, started to get some questions or started to question after an article came out about FTX's solvency. And really what they were saying is, what ultimately is backing up the value of all these FTX coins? At one point, a, an FTX token, I think was worth about $80 at one point. Um, oh, wow. and, 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 and so the question mark came, well, why is it worth $80? 
and what does FTX have to support it? Think of it as the U.S. government has Fort Knox, so to speak, full of gold to back up the full faith and credit. Well, what does FTX have to back up the full faith and credit of these tokens? And so all of a sudden, Binance thought, I don't think we want to be in these tokens anymore. So they started selling them. And at this point, think of a run on the bank. So they started selling FT, FTX's tokens, the FTT or whatever you call when, it. And when was this? Do you know? This is early November, end of October. Okay. Um, and I don't have an exact date. but Right at, where the cliff started to... Yeah, end of oh yeah, yeah. exactly. That's that's I wasn't looking at that chart, but yeah, end of October, beginning of November. Yeah. Um, well, when when uh, Binance starts to sell their FTX tokens and word spreads in the crypto space, other people are saying, "I want to get out. I want to get out." And all of a sudden, it, it's it's just an old fashioned bank run, is honestly what it is. And the problem is. Um, FTX did not have the solvency to be able to support it. And so um, all of a sudden, the layers of the onion started getting pulled back to be like, okay, well, where is it then? All these people started saying, okay, where is my $2 million? I put $2 million yeah. in this. It was in FTX. Where's my $80 that I put how, in this? How much did investors have or I'm not even maybe speculators have uh, at at FTX. How much money did Sam Bankman Fried, who's like a 30 year old um, Stanford or Harvard grad, I can't remember, you know, um, and his girlfriend and a bunch of others chilling in the Bahamas. How much money was at FTX? no one knows for sure. I mean, wow. you see all these different numbers, billions. It was billions of dollars, but I've I've heard numbers up to 30 billion. And then I've heard numbers of 10 to 12 billion. So I haven't heard official numbers and I don't know if that's been decided. They have filed chapter 11. And so all of it has kind of been clamped down now. Yeah. And I'll say this, there's two parts of FTX. There's FTX, uh, world and there's like global and then there's FTX US as well. But I I don't have the actual answer and I don't know if anyone has all that. So that so okay. Before we talk about Sam Bankman Fried and his crazy parties in the Bahamas, you know, and his network of very academically smart people, but definitely not wise people. Yeah. Um, before we get there, we can see on our screen, the, the FTX token has lost 97% of its value. So if somebody had a dollar in there, it's now worth three cents, two cents. Okay. Uh, that's if it's tied up in a token. But what happened if somebody owned Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other coin at FTX? Where is it? Is it gone? It, it as of right now, FTX has shut down all liquidation and, and people trying to get their money out of the system. So that's, that, that's the big question, Mark, is where yeah. is the money? And we can go into it a little bit deeper because that as you peel back the onion, it gets somewhat fraudulent in the behavior. But but yeah, right now, no, no one can get their money. If your money has been in the FTX exchange, you cannot get your money out. So right now it's you know who knows if it's going to stay this way and hopefully yeah. investors get something back if not everything you know is the hope but if you owned anything it's it's frozen it's really gone so you had uh, i'm going to throw some names at you kevin o'leary shark tank okay yeah. he had a uh, significant investment in it tom brady certainly and giselle steph curry matt damon i remember a uh, a commercial at the super bowl uh, when Matt Damon's walking around, hey, you want to be on the edge of greatness or something like that? I remember leaning to my wife and said, here's the peak in Bitcoin. <laughs> it's just, yeah. come on. Um, so you had those people. You also had somebody that is a little less famous in our world. Uh, he ran a company called Skybridge Capital, Anthony Scaramucci, the mooch, who's a political figure as well. 
uh, he he had 20 to 25 percent of his firm's money. So clients money like he's in a he runs runs a wealth management firm. And like we do and put 20 to 25 percent of clients money in it. And um, and Sam Bankman Freed reportedly owned 40 percent of Skybridge Capital. But so you had all these people putting money in it. Hey, um, and and but, I think it's really important also to point Sequoia Capital, SoftBank, BlackRock, Cyber Global. I mean, all all those dudes. Like we're talking large financial institutions were backing FTX. Larry Fink said yesterday they lost twenty five million in in FTX. And I'm again, I I don't want to say you know. It's why we have an investing process. I'll say that. It's why we have an investing process. It's why we haven't touched crypto. But peel back the onion for me. Like, what happened? Why yeah. is this dude with the fro? What he do? Yeah. You know, if you are only known by initials, you've done something. Now, good or bad, he did something. Um, here's the thing. I... There's still so much information. He, he was interviewed in, on CNBC yesterday, and he's putting out one narrative. And then there's a whole bunch of other narratives. And, and I think one of the most accurate narratives is actually a conversation he had with a Vox reporter early on, very early on in this, that he had a personal relationship with that he thought he was just talking to a personal relationship. Yeah. But it ended up being a reporter interview. And he, he said a lot of very open and honest stuff. It tells you from a reporter standpoint, Jerry Sloan gave me great advice. I'm not going to tell you the advice Jerry gave me concerning the media, but you have Why? To, because there's a few F-bombs in it. There's there's some <laughs> strong language in there, but he was very accurate in that. But ultimately- The old former jazz coach, if anybody- Yeah, old is, former is jazz wondering. coach, Jerry. So ultimately, this is what is out there saying this is believed to have happened. And, and, and Bankman Freed- uh, SBF, I'll, I'll explain his position. But as the bank run came out and, and people started wanting to get their funds back, um, take their money off of the exchange, yeah. um, they did not have the liquidity to be able to do that. So then the question came, well, where was the liquidity? The accusation right now is that I'm going to add another entity. There was another entity called Alameda Research. Alameda okay. Research was kind of like a hedge fund, so to speak, that SBF, that Sam Bankman Fried was a part owner. Now, so you have you have FTX on one side, then underneath it, you have this Ala, Alameda, Alam, Alameda. Alameda Research. Al, Alameda Research. You have those two companies, both based out of the Bahamas. Alameda, yes, I believe so, but I'm actually not sure where the head where where it was. But it was it was a trading firm, a cryptocurrency trading firm, not an exchange. But think of it like kind of like a hedge fund is what yep. it was. And Bankman Freed is trying to say that they're very separate right now. They were completely separate, but the CNBC interviewer Andrew Ross Sorkin connected a lot of dots there. There were a lot of dots. These people yeah. were living together. They were interacting together and stuff. Well, they the weren't just living together. <laughs> the accusation was, is that FTX was taking client deposits and stuff that was sitting there and then loaning that money and loaning those currencies to Alameda Research, who were then taking that money and investing and trading it and trying to make money off of it. Um, so what we're talking about is, in a way, theft, because that's not mm -hmm. disclosed to, to clients that you could just take their money and go use it for, for other purposes. So let's talk about those other purposes real quick. Yeah. They take client money from FTX, funnel it over to Alameda, buy real estate, um, boats, um, political donations, huge political donations. What else? In cryptocurrency mainly, honestly. Was so it? I think, I think FTX was using a lot of its profits and stuff to buy the stuff and do the stuff. At least this is what SBF is saying to do there. 
mm -hmm. the, the stuff you're talking about. Alameda Research literally was just a trading firm, like a hedge fund. And Alameda Research, all of a sudden, liquidity. I mean, if, you, if you're trading cryptocurrencies and going long cryptocurrencies this year, what's happened to you? Oh, you've so, been smashed. You've been smashed. So all of a sudden, think of it in terms of dominoes. I, in terms of just the way this is working, I come to you, Brett, and say, hey, I want the $5 that I, I, I lent you. And you're thinking, oh, crap, I lent that $5 to Alameda Research. I got to go call Alameda Research. Alameda Research, we need our $5 back. And Alameda Research says, oh, crap, guess what? That, that $5 is worth 20 cents because everything's down 80%. Yeah. So that's where a lot of the money went is it was, it was being traded and the assets were worth much less. So then Alameda Research imploded because of capital calls. FTX had to go into bankruptcy protection because they didn't have the assets to support it. And at, who's holding the bag is Sam Bankman Fried is apologizing. He's we 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 all know this behavior happened. Now Sam Bankman Fried is saying, I didn't know, I'm sorry, I messed up, but I didn't have any of the controls in place. I didn't, I, I in pretty much he's he's um He's citing incompetence, is yeah. saying, I, I was incompetent. I didn't know I made huge mistakes. And that most optimistically is that's true. That's the most optimistic scenario is that he was completely incompetent in that realm of running a business. Obviously, the dark side is that he wasn't and um, that they were commingling funds and it was it was complete fraudulent yeah. behavior. It's fraudulent behavior regardless. The question is, was it intent or not? And when you, when you hear question. the stories and the lifestyle. Oh, yeah, for sure. You, you um, have to and think the, people, it was known. Yeah, you, I, I have a hard time believing it wasn't known. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. I do. And, and, and who knows exactly how this plays out. But also, so, so this is a case of. Is it is it just I mean, it's it's bad risk management. Certainly it's fraud, in our opinion. Uh, it's also. The use of leverage gone wrong. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Borrowed which, money, which goes back to the risk. Right. And, and leverage for clients that are just listening to this leverage is borrowing money to make investments it's you know and that when it goes in your favor leverage is great because it's not your money you know yep. it's the bank's money or whoever's and it's working great but leverage can crush you just like that and we are seeing billions of dollars of value evaporate in a very short period of time because of leverage so greed greed destroyed a lot of people's money that that worked hard for it. And that's, that's dang sad. Um, what oh, it's, it's horrible. What did you learn from this whole FTX saga and the Alameda and the parties in the Bahamas, which we won't get into. And, and really I, yeah, I, answer. Yeah. Answer that question. Um, so I think there's two big takeaways for me. Um, and, and, We've all experienced the last three years uh, when it comes to the stock market, cryptocurrency, and all of those things. Had plenty of conversations with clients. And um, it, it, it's the old Warren Buffett quote, but I'll tell you what, everyone can get caught up in a wave and they don't care. They don't care what's going on. Like, I mean, yeah. honestly, people aren't asking questions when things are going good. So you, no, you know, I'll, I don't want to interrupt your, your answer, but I will tell you. When crypto was going good, we had several people. Why aren't you doing this? And I had friends that were playing in the crypto world telling me I was crazy for not doing so. Oh, there's everybody there's, gets caught up. There's wealth advisors that uh, we have tweets by wealth advisors two years ago saying you can't be a fiduciary and not have your clients in crypto. You have a Rick, fiduciary. Rick Edelman's probably the biggest. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, yeah, you can get caught up in a wave, but eventually the tide is going to go out and we'll see who has swim trunks on. I yeah. mean, that's the first thing. And and there's 
I sent you a quote today about you, you, Charlie Munger talking about greed's not running the world, it's envy. And I think that that's, I think crypto is one of the greatest FOMO trades thus far, where most people that clients that called us to say, why aren't we in this? It's because they knew someone else that was spouting off their games yeah. at lunch or whatever it was, and they were envious that they weren't participating in it. And so I think that's the first thing I learned or just relearned or reiterated to me. Don't get caught in a wave, you know, don't, it, it, just be happy for those people, but don't get caught in a wave because the tide's going to get pulled out. And this goes to the second thing, because when the tide goes out, you better know what you own and why you own it. And I guarantee, I guarantee this. I don't guarantee a lot. I guarantee those people on that list that you named, Tom Brady, Matt Damon, Steph Curry, even Kevin O'Leary, who's a very smart guy, dare I say Tiger Global, uh, Sequoia, who are some of the smartest investors, but yep. I can guarantee they did not understand the complexity of the investment and the currencies and what was going on completely. And if you don't understand it, in my mind, you can't put money behind it. You can try, you can get smart and you can try to, but otherwise you're speculating and that's okay, but you have to call it for what it is. Don't call yeah. it investing. You're speculating. Uh, um, I, I, I really do hope that if anybody has an investment in crypto, I hope it goes to the moon. I hope it goes up to a million dollars a coin just because I want you to succeed, right? Yeah. But just be careful in, in what Spencer just said. Uh, I'm going to flip the script a little bit here, Spencer, and talk about a story that happened locally and then tie this, wrap this up with a bow. Yeah, good. Uh, a story that happened happened recently that's with the SEC, and I've seen some local newspapers run stories, is there's about a 25 to $30 million Ponzi scheme in Utah starting up, well, starting with an advisor that's around, uh, lives around Brian and I, but most of the money was uh, up in Logan. And this guy, uh, he, he influenced people to give him money solely to rip them off. And it came out that it was a Ponzi scheme. And we have some people that we know that have lost 80, 90% of their retirement. And so part of this is, and why I bring that up is trust is so important. Trust in where you're investing, trust in what you're investing in. And so if there's one thing that, that people can learn from this, it's, have trust, but also for us, for example, we will never hold or touch client money. It has to be held at TD Ameritrade. It has to be or, independent. Or Charles, third, Schwab. Or Charles Schwab. Yep. Pretty soon, all to be Charles Schwab anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Fidelity, anything. You have to have a third party producing statements um, independent of who you're investing with. Uh, very, very important. Don't, don't get caught up in, hey, this stable coin is going to give you 8 to 10%. Huh? Some, if it's too good to be true, it guess what? It probably is. It probably is. And that's an important concept that people need to understand as we continue to peel the onion back on San Bankman Freed, but also in this local Ponzi scheme garbage mess that people were hurt by. Well, and and Brett, I'll, I'll tell you just, I want to reiterate what you said, because every once in a while, we'll have conversations with clients and especially new clients that come on. How am I protected? How do I know you guys aren't going to steal the money? Someone's going to run off with this money. Yeah. And, and so you pointed out um, two really important things. First of all, a wealth advisor should never hold the money themselves. There should be what's called a custodian. And I'm not saying in all situations, but typically that's a flag if a wealth advisor is holding your money. You need to verify some more things. It doesn't 100% mean a Ponzi scheme is going on, but it's a flag that should raise your awareness. Yep. Um, and so you, you want to make sure there's another institution, a highly credited institution. The, the biggest ones in our industry are Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, 
those are some of the biggest names. There's others, Vanguard and some of those as well. Um, but then the second thing is who produces the statements? Who monthly tells you what's going on in the account? It shouldn't be the advisor. Now, we provide quarterly updates for our clients to tell them what's going on, but they're verified by TD Ameritrade or Charles Schwab, which is sending you a, a, a statement every single month. Bernie Madoff, who's the poster boy for Ponzi schemes, he held the money and he created his own statements so he could falsify anything. So for people listening to this, those are two big, big, big protections and flags if they're not the case. Who's creating the statement? It better not be the advisor. And who's holding the money? It most likely shouldn't be the advisor. If it is, you need to dig a lot deeper to understand why. Yeah, it it truly does. You think about this FTX situation and these people losing money. And yeah, there's the Matt Damon, Steph, Steph Curry, um, Tom Brady's of the world. And, you know, I don't know if I met, I, I, well, I feel bad for them. They were hurt, but I feel more... I, I, you know, my heart aches for those people that this was part of their retirement, yeah. whether in that local scam or in FTX, it just, it's terrible. It, it, it is absolutely terrible. Um, but it goes back to learning lessons from these experiences and making sure that you know what you're investing in. How's this for a gloomy podcast? Yeah, this was kind of gloomy. Hey, can I spin this at the very end to be positive? Okay, spin so it. we're going to we're going to spin it to be positive really quickly. Hey, it's December, okay? First beginning of December, you've got one more month and there are things that you can be doing from a tax strategy standpoint, a contribution standpoint, all of those things. That's what I'm primarily spending a whole lot of my time and energy on is making sure that people are being as efficient as possible before we get to December 31st. So if, if anyone has questions, please reach out to us. Um, we are reaching out to clients when we're aware of what needs to be done, but there might be stuff going on for clients that we aren't aware. You know, they might have some liquidity event. They might have something going on that we aren't aware of. Please reach out to us so that we can make sure you're being as efficient as possible going into the end of the year for 2022. So hopefully we can save you some more money in taxes or actually make you some money with some specific investments. So yeah, in fact, you should see the for taxable accounts, you should see the list of tax loss harvesting I'm running through right now. So yeah. there's going to be some good activity coming up to take advantage of that. So hey, we are moving into December. It's been one heck of a wild ride this year. And uh, hopefully you learned something from, from these two, really primarily the FTX example. Just invest in what you know and understand. Keep it simple. And with that, my friends, Spencer, great to see your face. Hey, great to see you too. Hey, can I, can, let's end with a famous quote by our good, uh, the poets, TLC. I Don't thought you were going to say, let's finish with what Munger called cryptocurrency. A year ago, uh, what did he call it? Which was a venereal disease. <laughs> that might be better. I was, I was gonna go. I was gonna something go, better than that. I was gonna go. The famous poet TLC telling our investors, "Don't go chasing waterfalls. Stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to." <laughs> oh boy, you're a good kid, Spencer. All right, my friends. Until next time. Bye bye.